Wonderful to have you here. It's great to be with you. Um, let's talk socialism in America. Um, this has been a something that's been coming up in all sorts of ways. We've got the Green New Deal. Um, we have op people who are openly democratic socialists being, uh, yeah. or social democrats I, uh, being um, elected. Um, many people are alarmed. Some people are thrilled. What are your thoughts? Well, having spent a, a summer in the Soviet Union as an exchange student back between my sophomore and junior year in college, uh, I've seen socialism, communism up close and personal. Whether you call it socialism, progressivism, communism, uh, there's only one way it works, and that's if you have a totalitarian government that has the power to take what has been earned by people that are working hard and spread it around to everybody. Uh, I've been amazed, though, that there are so many billionaires in America that seem to be contributing heavily toward moving this country to socialism. They are not stupid. They surely know you don't have a middle class in a socialist, communist, progressive society. You have that thin veneer of a ruling class and then you have everybody else being ruled. They give up their rights. And of course, uh, you know, what you saw in the Soviet Union, you saw in Venezuela, um, if it's truly socialist, everybody's sharing and sharing alike. People quit working as hard as they did. You bankrupt a country. And I'll never forget uh, being at a collective farm. And I'd worked on farms and ranches, you know, growing up in East Texas. And, you know, we we're about the same latitude as they were where I was in Ukraine. And mid-morning, you got all these farmers sitting around in the shade. And I used the best Russian I could to politely say uh, uh, or ask when do you work out in the fields they looked like they were hardly cultivated nobody had been out that morning working at all and you know in the summertime you try to get out at sun up so you can quit before the sun wears you down and these guys hadn't been out at all and they laughed when i asked the question i thought maybe i screwed up the translation and one of them said in russian i make the same number of rubles if I'm out there in the sun, as I do in the shade, so I'm here in the shade. That explains it. I mean, that's why socialism doesn't work. And of course, the, uh, the line you've probably heard is true. Uh, one of the problems with socialism is you can vote your way into it, but you have to shoot your way out. And that's what we're seeing down in Venezuela. Unfortunately, they've lost their guns. And so the government has the guns and the tear gas, and they're just wanting some freedom back. So I've been amazed at how miseducated so many young people are about socialism. It sounds, if you really look at it, it's something that elementary school kids should embrace because it's share, and that's a wonderful idea. It was a great idea for the New Testament church. Okay, we're gonna share and share alike, bring into the common storehouse, and Mark's basically saying, uh, from those according to their ability to those according to their need. That sounds wonderful. It sounds like a, a great Christian idea. The, the pilgrims tried it, you know, bring to the common storehouse. And then after the first winter, they lost so many to starvation and cold that they said, oh, let's try something different. Of course, this is a big summary, but ultimately, let's try private property. You get to keep what you grow, what you produce. And the same in the New Testament church, eventually Apostle Paul had to say, okay, forget that new rule. If you don't work, you don't eat, you know, because it doesn't work. So I can see, you know, elementary school kids saying, oh, I love the idea of everybody attractive. sharing. But then as you get to junior high or middle school and high school and college, you ought to be inquisitive enough to know why has socialism, communism, progressivism failed everywhere it's ever been tried. It's because it won't work with human beings. And, and the founders knew that. They were so well read and so studied on the different forms of government. They understood you've got to have a totalitarian government if you're going to force that on people. But again, to the billionaires, 
Apparently it looks good to them. They feel like they'll be in that upper ruling class. They'll have everything they want. And then everybody else in the country will be the minions. They'll tell them how they can live and what they got to do without. So this is, this is actually my question. What you, what, why do you think they believe that they can, that the system could actually work given that the, these billionaires didn't certainly make their billions under that system right. and would be possibly unlikely to be able to do that, especially if they were self-made and so forth. Well, I've asked a similar question to extremely wealthy people, and I said, you know, you were able to make yours, why are you pulling up the ladder behind you? And they don't have a good explanation. But I think the reason that, that again, it goes back, it sounds so nice everybody sharing and they haven't thought it through because they've heard it from the media they've heard it from the movies they've heard it from the schools that they grew up in and absolutely been overwhelmed at uh, liberal universities so it sounds good I've and it guilt being cited actually maybe they sure do, maybe guilt is do a, everything so you're right guilt is another up, part you know? yeah. yes we want, ought to want to share and share alike but uh, what you see is it does not produce, produce enough to sustain a society permanently. And you have to have a very totalitarian government that takes away freedoms uh, because they have to be strong enough to take away what people have earned and give it to people that haven't earned it. Congressman Gomar, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure to Appreciate be with you. it. Thank you for tuning in.